Can you walk us through the process of, of something like that? Like obviously home alone is probably most of these players have played home alone at some point not, not in the, the past, but Oh no, no, it, 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 you take, this is the thing is it, it the, but film music just used to be a, a theme arrangements. Now we're playing the whole movie. It, this is what's to your point, Matt, you were asking about the performance part of it. And I've noticed, I've been doing this a lot since about 2011. I started the bowl in 2007, but really this film with live orchestra really took off when uh, West Side Story was mounted in 2011 at the, at the bowl. It, I went everywhere that year, 11 places, you know, in, in, in Europe and stuff. And then it just, they saw, wow, we can, make, you know, and then they started doing this. So um, these orchestras have gotten better and better at playing it, but they're not, this is the full score. Home Alone has all kinds of stuff besides the little theme. It, it's It's got a whole vaudeville section, the last part of the movie. It's like Bugs Bunny cartoon music, you know. Um, at least that's what John John calls it vaudeville, like like um, uh, like like he calls the um, the barrel the the barrel chase in, not in Jaws but I don't know, the the one in Indiana Jones where she's run they're running around before he shoots he calls that kind of cue a, a vaudeville cue because it's real sinking and it's real you know no nobody nobody or very rarely would any of orchestra have played that cue so. But the more they play it and you rehearse it and you perform it over a long period of time, they start to get it, what it is, how to how to do it, you know. And to your point, Matt, film music traditionally has been very, very performance based because there's one shot at it. You get a recording like pop music. That's pop music. You know, yes, they'll tour, but, you know, it's not the real definitive performance is the recording right so now with film with live orchestra as i said there's certain strictures but if it's taken into this place that they live in where they're doing beethoven symphonies and Mahler and shostakovich over and over in in different ways it puts it in a little different realm it means the performance doesn't have to be absolutely perfect necessarily but it needs to have the style you know if you're playing french music wc or ravel you the orchestra play you know they play wagner they played in a, blah 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 yeah so there is that aspect but they've gotten better and better and better all of them their their attitudes now are pretty much wonderful because they see you can't help it when you walk on stage and it starts and that film comes up the audiences there's a different they they view it like more like they're at a rock concert. So the guys in the Phil, the LA Phil, it says like when they're playing for for like um, uh, you know um, uh, Katy Perry or, or Christina Aguilera or something. It, it has more of that flavor in terms of the audience response. But you're you're playing cla basically classical concert music with motives and themes that are developed, reused in a pretty. 19th century composerly way yeah there's a lot of variation and there's a lot of you know stuff the different stuff but essentially an orchestra is a, a, a 19th century institution you know so it's got a lot of interesting it, it it has a lot of interesting things that i think could be done in the future whether that will happen or not i i i don't i don't know but that's sort of my are, are can you kind of walk us through the yeah maybe logistical uh, steps of this home alone sure. being maybe an example of okay. something. If you have an orchestra that hasn't played it yet, where do you begin with that? How do you lead up to the event? Well, the, let's go back to the, the, as I said, there are these producing entities, you know, there's, there's the one, the, the, the one that does all of John Williams stuff, the one that does Harry Potter, uh, Disney does all of their own stuff. Uh, and there are other little ones here and there. And what they do is they choose a film that they think is worth spending $150,000 on to produce that they can get back, right? So now is this going into the weeds too much or, uh, or all right. No, so, this is no. exactly what we want. Okay, so they, you, what you do is you license it. Home Alone, I think is universal, was it? Uh, whatever, right? So you, you speak with the powers that be at Universal. By now there's people at each studio that, they know who to talk to. They make a deal with them that 
of the gross amount of the rental fee that they're going to charge the orchestra. Say the studio will take 15%, the composer will take whatever percentage, and, and, and the person that books it will take whatever percentage, and whatever's left over goes back into the coffers of the producer, right? So they, they get the film. Generally, you have to make an intermission because by law, the, not by law, by the union in the United States where most of this is done at this point, you can't go more than 90 minutes without a break. You can't do a two-hour hmm. film straight through unless you pay an exorbitant amount of money, which is, of course, is, is not what you want to do. So they find where an intermission is. Then they get all the elements... The stems, you know, you, the, the dialogue stem, the effects stem, what, whatever there is, basically Pro Tools files. They go into a, a, an online editing facility and they mute, you know, obviously they mute the music, though they will have the music for the conducting, which I will explain in a second. They make a performance audio video out of it. They might do a little, depending on the movie, clean up the dialogue. They might not have all the effects. Maybe they'll thin it, you know case-by-case case basis, and here's now your performance hard hard disk, you know, it's HD, right? It's, everything's, everything has to be, you know, transferred to HD. And then they, okay, so they do that. At the, in the meantime, they have to find all the music, and they have to engrave it. They have to start over and type, you know, put it in Sibelius or Finale or now Dora, you know, whatever it is, create a whole new score, and a set of parts that work seamlessly through, you know, each act. Very expensive. You know, you're talking thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars just to do that, right? But just the one-time cost, right? Um, then you have to make the conduct the video for the conductor, which has the streamers, flutters, whatever it is. That that is can be variable. It can, you know, there's there's kind of a state of the art now. There's also a bar and beat counter in the upper right-hand corner. Sometimes there's time code, but generally now all there is is the streamers for you, a bar and beat counter, and then when the queue ends, there's an elapsed time between the next queue. So there's a countdown clock, which is, we've learned that those three elements are absolutely crucial. We weren't always there with that. The countdown clock is really crucial because you can just zone out while you're waiting for the next cue, right? So they do that, then they take, they premiere it, they might work a little bit more on it. And then what happens is the orchestras, um, they rent it. So w when an orchestra does, say, Gershwin or Bernstein, they call up Boozy and Hawks, who have all that, and they negotiate a rental fee, and then Boozy and Hawks, or whoever the publishing house is, sends them the material, and then they perform it, and they send the material back, and they pay seven, eight hundred dollars, whatever it is. This is you rent the movie, you get the parts, you get the film, you get a video person to run the film and kind of oversee the technology of what it is. But then the orchestra has to rent or buy their project. Most of them have now own it or, or they have a rental deal because they're doing so many. They hire the conductor. It's their orchestra. They sell the tickets and they keep all the box office. So the way the producers make money is through the rental. And obviously, you know, and they might rent it from thirty to seventy thousand dollars per series of concerts. Because they, you know, they might rent Harry Potter and do Four performances. So that would be a certain fee. If they did two performances, it would be another fee. And then the production companies keep adding to their portfolio, renting, re-renting, because these orchestras do a lot of them several times and oh and try to get perennials, as you were referring, Kenny, to like home alone. 